the Battle of Laoyang was a major battle and a series of battles in the Russo-Japanese War 1904 to 1905, fought between the Russian Empire and the Japanese Imperial Army, fueled by the Russian Empire's aspirations to remain firmly entrenched in Manchuria. Laoyang today is a quiet town located in Liaoning province, but on the 25th of August 1904, it was a hotbed of activity and the site of a mammoth clash between two opposing forces. The city was a stronghold of the Russian army, and the Russian army had put in place a formidable defense by fortifying the city with three lines of fortifications, but despite that, Prince Oyama, who was spearheading the attack on Liaoning, instructed his commanders to take the city on the 25th of August, three weeks after the Japanese had got ashore, and under his instructions, the 1st, 2nd and 4th IJA Imperial Japanese Army went on the attack. The Russians had on their side approximately 158,000 men, 14 divisions including 11 cavalry squadrons supported by 609 artillery pieces, while the IJA had approximately 8 divisions, 120,000 men supported by 117 artillery pieces. Prior to the onset of battle, the Russian general in charge, Alexei Kuropatkin, divided his men into three groups, the Eastern Group, the Southern Group and retained 30 battalions in reserve. His outer defensive line extended for about 12 miles south of the city. At the start of the battle, the 2nd IJA moved along the railway lines while the 1st IJA converged on the city from the north and the 4th IJA was held as reserve to be committed towards aiding the 2nd IJA towards the end of the battle. Despite holding the numerical advantage, Kuropatkin opted to take a defensive stance and was willing to withdraw and concede territory while waiting for reinforcements to arrive. It has to be said, however, in Kuropatkin's defense that he was unaware of the numerical advantage that he held and was under the impression from the word go that the Russian army was outnumbered. Prince Oyama, on the other hand, had precise knowledge of the size and strength of Kuropatkin's army, partially due to intel that was supplied by local informants. Fighting began on the 9th of the 25th of August with a barrage of Japanese artillery strikes, followed by an advance by the Japanese Imperial Guards under the command of Lieutenant General Hasegawa Yoshimichi, but the Japanese army suffered initial defeats due to repeated and concerted defensive fire by the Russian army. Fierce fighting erupted on the 9th of the 25th. The IJA 2nd Division and the IJA 12th Division and the San Siberian Army called to the east of Liaoyang at the foot of Pico Mountain, and by the evening of the following day, the IJA had emerged triumphant after Kuropatkin had ordered a retreat under the cover of a torrential downpour to the outermost defensive line which he had reinforced with additional troops. Further fighting was stalled by the heavy rain that turned dirt roads and mountains passes into muddy, unusable traps and visibility was hampered by thick fog on the morning of the 26th of August. The advance of the IJ 2nd and 4th Army was also stalled by the reinforced defensive line. But Kurpatkin did not push the advantage and instead, on the 27th of August, ordered that his men abandon the outer defensive perimeter and fall back to the 2nd defensive line that was approximately 7 miles south of Liaoyang and included several heavily fortified hills. The unfavorable weather conditions might have influenced his decision and the torrid conditions favored the defenders and he might have well been content to dig in and wait for reinforcements to arrive from the north. The IJA launched another major assault on the city on the 30th of August, however victory was thwarted by the heavy fortifications. Kuropatkin could have seized the advantage but he continued to maintain a defensive posture. On the 1st of September, the IJA made major breakthroughs, forcing the Russian army to abandon their positions and retreat inland, enabling the IJA to take control of the railway lines that went in and out of the city and advanced towards the city. Kuropatkin, in desperation, finally gave the order to counterattack, but it came a little too late and the Russians, who had sustained heavy casualties, and were running short of supplies and ammunition continued with the retreat and on the 3rd of September, Kuropatkin was forced to abandon the city.